Hi, my name is Tammy Hobbs. I am the Vice President for Waste Management. We are here to show you our solution for treatment of sodium contaminated radioactive waste. Sodium is our challenge. Sodium is a reactive metal that must be removed from the waste prior to disposal. Based on our past experience and a lot of research, we decided to remove sodium from the waste using a distillation process. Distillation is a process normally used in industry for things like making gasoline from oil or moonshine from corn mash. It was really innovative to think about using distillation to remove sodium metal from a waste that requires remote handling for worker safety. Initially, we thought the process would need to be located in a hot cell due to the high radiation levels. But the waste management team came up with a very simple and effective way of locating that equipment outside of the hot cell with absolutely no compromise to worker safety. I'm going to let the team show you their idea. Hi, I'm Tom Clements. I'm the Transuranic Waste Program Manager. One of my main responsibilities is ensuring that any of our waste streams, whether they be generated as contact handled waste from our retrieval projects or remote handled transuranic waste, can be qualified for disposal at the waste isolation pilot plant. Over the last couple of years, we've had a, gained a lot of experience with handling sodium contaminated waste. Because of our experience in, that we gained from that, DOEID gave us the opportunity in our new contract to take 28 containers of known sodium contaminated waste from the materials and fuels complex. The 28 containers contain a total of about 117 pounds of sodium ranging anywhere from a few grams of sodium up to about 34 pounds of sodium. Hi, my name is Larry Huber. I'm the Waste Management Operations Director. Behind me is the FTP cell. This is where we bring the remote handle true waste in to repackage the waste. Our new waste stream has quite a challenge in that it's sodium contaminated, so we have to figure out or be able to process it without having uh, sodium events. Uh, part of this is we're going to bring the waste into open it up and separate in what we call an argon repackaging station or more commonly called an arse. Behind me right here, we have a small arse that we use for lot two for testing. The new arse that we're gonna have though is much bigger than that. It's gonna be four foot by six foot by two foot high so that we can get the cans in, get the material out of the cans, get it repackaged, and then put it in distillation baskets. And from there, it goes down through the DNI tube, down to the SB8 to the distillation system, which is where we're gonna distill the waste or distill the sodium off of. Once it's done, the waste comes back up, we'll reprocess it, the waste, and then package it out. Hello, I'm Keith Farmer. I'm the nuclear facility manager for the remote handled transuranic programs. Um, part of the program was to install a sodium distillation system. Our early designs and conceptuals were to install this equipment inside of the FTP hot cell. As we were into the program and looking at it, people were studying it, and we saw the amount of work that it would take to install and some future inspections that we wanted to be able to do. The thought came up that if we could install it in a cleaner area outside the cell, this would be a much better use of the facility and better for the program. They remembered a room called the minus 31 DNI room that was available and had very little equipment in it and would probably be a good fit for the equipment. And this is the room that's been selected and the equipment installed. Hi, my name is Chad Nelson. I work with the Intech Maintenance Group as the team lead for the cranes, bars, manipulators. We were kind of chose for the SB8 project to lead the project as a maintenance team. We had a lot of challenges. Probably some of the biggest challenges we had was uh, probably the radiological in the room and then the heavy objects that we've had to remove from the room. Um, we've had great support from the RADCON organizations, the, the other groups in maintenance, the welders so forth have been a big, a big, big help in getting this work done. Um, the DNI tube that come through the ceiling had a support structure that weighed about 800 pounds and it was, uh, it was hung from the ceiling. We had to figure out a safe way to, to get this structure down and removed. Uh, we've removed drain piping and ventilation ducting from the room, instrumentation lines, rerouted some electrical. 
Uh, we've got the room to now, uh, it's been painted and it's to a clean state. Uh, we're in the room installing the stainless steel pan for a RICRA enclosure. And uh, after we get the pan installed, we're going to go into installing the sodium distillation system, which is going to be a big job starting probably the end of the month, first part of June. But we're looking forward to it and ready to take on the challenge. Hi, my name is Dennis Conley. I'm the design authority for this distillation design system that we're building here. And we've built a mock-up of the room that we're going to put it in because it's a tight fit just like you'll see in a minute. But we've actually built the distillation system here and we're going to uh, test it and run it and make it work right. So let's have a look in the room here. Now we're in the mock-up room where we've got this sodium distillation system all set up. The first component in the system is this distillation vessel where we boil off sodium from that sodium contaminated waste that went inside earlier. The moonshiners have already figured out how to do that because they've taken mash and boiled off alcohol. We do the same thing with that sodium. We vaporize that sodium and it goes into the condenser and turns to a liquid and that liquid is collected here in this vessel ready for disposal. The waste left in the distillation chamber here is now sodium free and ready for disposal at WIP. So now let's go have a look at how we control this system safely. We've just walked through the sodium distillation system where we remove that hazard of the sodium. The other hazard we're concerned about is the high radioactivity. So we need our operators to be able to be remotely located to run this system safely. This is Ryan Offutt who's developing all the human machine interface software. He's got this system developed so that the operators can do this from here and this is where we'll make it all happen. Hi, I'm Mark Sherrick. I'm the project manager for this distillation system. And we're very fortunate to be able to build this at Premier Technologies in a mock-up um, room to simulate the tight, constrained spaces that we're going to have to work within once we get it out to our facility. Another big challenge is to be able to disassemble this equipment in small enough parts and pieces that we can manhandle these through our very narrow corridor, three feet wide, and then reassemble in the room. Our engineers have put together this assembly video to try to um, help the planners in laying out our work packages so that we can do this in the most efficient, effective manner. Here we have the parts and pieces of the enclosure coming in the room. The knife gate valve, the stainless steel plate in the bottom of the enclosure. That's over a thousand pounds in itself. Here's the cap that goes on top of the distillation vessel, the walls. The concept here is that we can then sling underneath this Hook it up with our gantry crane, which is designed just for the room, small, made out of aluminum, two, two-ton hoist. Now we lift that up into position, hook it up to the DNI tube, which comes down out of the hot cell from the top, and we can bring the legs in and bolt them into place. It's really hard to work under a suspended load without having everything fixed. So by doing this, we're able to then remove the crane, get everything out of the way, and we can bring the vessels in and hook them up. Here's where we bring in the installation of the auxiliary equipment, the tanks and vessels of the sodium distillation unit. Um, here we have the condenser, the condenser stand, the collection vessel, which will go underneath. Um, here we have our air filter and our vacuum pump. Now the heater units will come in, um, first the back unit, then the distillation vessel itself, then the front unit. We have a jack underneath this that will then push it up to the bottom of the enclosure where we can bolt it in place. Once we have all of this equipment installed and the heavy pieces in, now the um, small tubing connections and the electrical and stuff become fairly routine and easy. As you can see, we have a really simple process for a very hard problem. It is this kind of simple approach that keeps CWI successful in this business. We have designed, built, and tested this process. Soon we will be placing it in our nuclear facility and treating the waste. The really exciting news is that the waste we are treating is just a fraction, a very small fraction of the waste in the complex that requires this kind of treatment, and we will be ready to do it.